The very first thing that you may notice right off the bat here is that our refined storage system is offline, which is less than ideal. And uh, I did a little bit of uh, you know digging to try and find out why our system is offline. And it turns out that our power is off, right? Uh, our reactor is currently not doing what reactors are supposed to do. Now, uh, this threw me a little bit because um, a lot of the system here still looks to be intact. However, I believe what has happened here is the Uranium-238 has backed up. Because what normally happens is you break the uranium grit into uranium-238, which then goes directly up into this uh, sequential fabricator here. And then the tiny piles of uranium-235, they come over to this other sequential fabricator, get crafted up into actual pieces of uranium-235, and they're stored in this cache, and then combined with the normal uranium-238 to make LEU-235 fuel. However, as you can see here, this bottom section has filled up with the uranium-238 to the point where our isotope separator is now fully clogged up. It can no longer uh, break down uranium grit uh, into the two forms of uranium, which means that, of course, we're no longer getting any more of those tiny clumps of uranium, and, uh, and therefore the whole system has backed up and stopped, which is less than ideal. Now, I think we can probably rectify this. The most obvious way is that we can just take some of the uranium out. Like, we take this out, uh, suddenly the isotope separator is back online, uh, suddenly the uh, tiny piles get created again, and suddenly the whole system, you know, kicks back into gear. However, that's not really much of a long-term solution, but I think it is probably the solution uh, that I'm going to go with for the time being, because I do plan um, at some point fairly soon uh, to update this reactor, uh, the reactor that we currently have, and also we should definitely, you know, fully rebuild that. But uh, this reactor that we currently have is okay, but it's not great. And I think we're definitely going to need more than 1,920 RF per tick going forward, especially chat, given that one of the things that I would like to work on in today's stream is getting an arc furnace. And the arc furnace, if we look at, for example, uh, the using of uh, hop substitute carbon fiber to make hop graphite dust, requires a whopping 4,096 redstone flux per tick on its own. So if we're going to get that, you know, working at all, on top of the power requirements for the, you know, the rest of our base, we're definitely going to have to work on getting a bigger reactor. There is a quest under chapter three to build a, um, a fusion reactor with electromagnets and a fusion core. This also requires a ton of power to get going. If you want to make this, you need 200 redstone flux per tick per electromagnet. And uh, given that you need 64 electromagnets to build uh, the smallest of fusion reactors, uh, that means that you need, I think it's just over uh, 12,000 yeah, 12,800 redstone flux uh, per tick is what you need to actually get uh, this fusion reactor up and running. So needless to say, at some point fairly soon, we're going to have to work on uh, on a much you know grander source of power. But for today, chat, what I want to start with before we start working on the arc furnace, that is, is I want to take a look at seeing if we can't get some dash pickaxes made. So the idea behind the dash pickaxe is that you can use it against the wall to get the hop graphite substitute this stuff right here, the hop substitute carbon fiber. And you can use that in an arc furnace with one hop graphite dust to get nine hop graphite ingots. So basically the way it works is you use nine of the carbon fiber with one hop graphite dust to get nine ingots. So you get nine times as many ingots from one dust than you normally would, right? Which is great because we need a ton of those ingots to get all the diamond nuggets. Going forward, we are going to need a ton of diamond nuggets to make actual diamonds and then to get uh, bedrock and uh, bedrock chunks and bedrock pickaxes and all that kind of shenanigans. So this seems like the better way to do it than the way that we're currently doing it, given that it multiplies our output by nine, so long as we have this hop substitute graphite fiber, which you get by hitting a wall with a dash pickaxe. The trouble here is that the dash pickaxe is a little tricky to make, requiring three dash ingots, two dash sticks, um, both of which are made with dash ingots. And then the dash ingots, of course, are made by smelting unrefined dash. And this is where things get a little bit janky chat. So to make unrefined dash, you need to combine hop graphite dust and cubic boron nitride in an alloy furnace, right? Hop graphite dust, easy enough. The cubic boron nitride is made in a pressurizer with hexagonal boron nitride, which is made in a crystallizer from boron nitride solution, which is made in a chemical reactor with boron, uh, boric acid and ammonia. Ammonia is made in the chemical reactor with nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen we can get from a nitrogen collector, easy enough. And hydrogen we can get from an electrolyzer, also easy enough. We can turn water into hydrogen uh, and oxygen and some other gases as well, but hydrogen is the one that we are after. Other than that, we also need the boric acid that is also made in a chemical reactor with water and diobrane. 
BioBrain is made in the chemical reactor with molten boron and hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas, of course, we can get from the hydrogen generator, but the boron is molten boron and is made by putting normal boron into a melter. And we could do that with the boron dust. The boron dust we do have a little bit of uh, in the system. We don't right now because we smelted it all up, but we can get more boron dust by uh, whacking a steel pickaxe against the wall. So if we're going to make, or if we're going to try and automate uh, the production of this dash. We need a couple of machines. Thankfully, I have jotted this down. I believe to make this work, we need four chemical reactors, these guys right here. We also need one electrolyzer, this guy right here. I would love to bookmark this. Uh, we need one melter for that boron. Uh, we also need a crystallizer as well as a pressurizer and finally an alloy furnace. Now I'm hoping that these are not as difficult to make as it may seem. Now, one thing that is going to make it a little difficult for us is the fact that we don't have any uh, graphite dust. And the reason for that, of course, is that our tree farm has hit uh, its, uh, its breaking point in the loop, less than ideal. Ah, oh, I see we've also run out of uh, Spaxel hose again, eh? We have indeed. Okay, so we are, we have only two ball on Spaxel hose in here, so we need to make at least two more if we're going to get this back online. So I think approximately 100 graphite dust might be enough to get us going here. So let's see. Uh, let's start with the four chemical reactors. So for that, we're going to need a ton of advanced plating, which actually needs more um, of the, uh, the tough alloy here, which is ferroboron and lithium. Lithium... We do have, and um, I think you can do it in, in dust form. I don't think I have to smelt that first. Um, and then, yeah, I can. And then ferroboron is uh, steel and boron. Now, boron, we are slowly but surely getting a little light on, but uh, for now, we do have, and we also do have some ferroboron. So I guess we can begin the process of making some more of this um, this tough alloy here. Do I have an alloy smelter? I do. N I do. It's over here, chat. Uh, let's, I think for now, move the electronics assembler. I don't think we're going to be making any more robots today. And let's just swap that out with the old, uh, the old uh, alloy furnace here. Apparently that's a quest complete as well, which is very nice. And uh, we might as well go ahead and grab some of those speed upgrades from downstairs. And while we're at it, we should probably also uh, swap out the flux duct there so it can you know, take as much power as it needs to get this alloy smelting done. There we go. Uh, 4,000 RF per tick might be a little high. 1,215 is uh, still quite high, but probably a little bit closer to, uh, you know, the realm of possibility. So we need at least four of those. Yeah, which uh, instantly puts us out in uh, in terms of lead. But thankfully, we do have lead down here. I've been saying it for what feels like ever now, but we really do need to set up a system that allows us to smelt all of this, right? We could definitely do with a new compact machine that, you know, just smelts everything before it's it's put into uh, into caches. But we should be able to make a few more of these. Now, I think each machine also requires one. So we need four chemical reactors and then one of each of the rest. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let me just check that all of these do require one. They do not. The alloy furnace doesn't, but the rest do. So we need eight of these. All right. Machine chassis. Part of the equation taken care of. Beautiful. Uh, what else do we need here? We need... At least four of these, which I think means we're going to need more of those solenoids. It definitely does. It looks like the solenoids are needed in more than one recipe as well. So we should probably also go ahead and grab yet more copper grit from uh, downstairs and get that cooking up as well. How many of these uh, motors did I make before? I made one. So we need at least three more of those. We then need at least three of uh, these guys down here, which also require some ferroboron alloy, which uh, we've just thrown a way into making uh, more tough alloy. Uh, thankfully, we do have uh, more steel and more boron, so making more of that ferroboron should be uh, very doable. And we need, what, eight of these? I'm going to take some of that steel out because I know we're going to need more of it today and we might, uh, we might run into an issue. But uh, let's go ahead and make all of those. Beautiful. And then I think, chat, we're almost there. So we need 16 of these advanced plating, which means, of course, we need a ton of uh, regular plating. And then do we have anywhere near what it takes here to make 16 of these? Of course we don't. <laughs> Although we are only out on uh, 
the tough alloy, which we do have. All right, that's actually done. Beautiful. All right, the hardest part, I think, is out of the way, chat. The electrolyzer is, uh, I hope, a little bit easier. Again, we do need so many of these uh, of these tough plates, though, so it is going to be a little, a little jank. We also need one graphite ingot, which I assume is just graphite dust smelted. It is indeed. Do we still have some graphite dust? We do. Fantastic. It was lead, of all things, that we ran out of. And so that's the electrolyzer taken care of. Uh, we then also need one melter, which again requires four more of those. And at that point, we are once again finally out of um, of tough alloy, but we do have more ferro boron and more lithium to get that going as well. Uh, we also need three more nether brick, which uh, should be very easy. It's just lava and redstone. And then that is the melter pretty much taken care of. And of course, of course, I say pretty much lightly because of course it's not enough. I'm going to smell the rest of the steel up here, chat. I think we can get more steel if we need it. There we go. Melter acquired. Next up is the crystallizer, which, as you guessed, requires four advanced plating, uh, followed by a cauldron. I'm going to make two because I know the arc furnace needs one as well later on in the stream. And then from there, I think we're good to go. Crystallizer acquired. Pressurizer requires these uh, chainsaw-looking things that are not chainsaws. They are linear actuators. And then, of course, you guessed it, four more advanced plating. And boom, that's a pressurizer done as well. And then finally, the alloy furnace we already have. Okay, I think, chat, that these are all of the machines that we need. We also uh, need to get ourselves a uh, nitrogen generator. I believe it's a nitrogen generator, right? It's nitrogen that we need. Let me check that real quick, though. Dash is made with the cubic boron nitrate, which is made with this guy, made with this substance, which is made with ammonia which is made with nitrogen. Yes, yeah, nitrogen gas that we need. So we do also need that nitrogen generator. This guy requires, you guessed it, four more advanced. Oh, we're so close. We're one, one tough alloy away. Let's get that cooking up, shall we? Uh, but we also need uh, two beryllium ingots, which I don't think we have. We do not. However, uh, you can get, uh, I believe, beryllium dust via the rock crusher. So you put uh, stone into the rock crusher, and then uh, you have a chance of getting anywhere between zero and two beryllium dust uh, per crush. So I think we are also going to have to make a rock crusher here, chat. So rock crusher. For now, we will, uh, I think, just swap out like the isotope separator. I don't think we necessarily need this just yet. So we'll throw you down like so. And then um, I don't know if you can put cobblestone in there to get beryllium. I don't think you can. I think it does have to be stone. Uh, thankfully, we do have 19 stone here, and uh, we only really need two... Oh, you can't use stone stone? Hold on. You can use... Is it just andesite? Ah, we need andesite, chat. Which we currently do not have. Is there a way for us to make andesite? There definitely is. We can hit the wall and hope. We really don't have... Oh, no, we do have andesite, chat. I'm, 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 I'm blind as a bat. Here we go. Andesite. Craft all that up. Throw it into the old rock crusher here. Give that, of course, all of the speed upgrades that money can buy. Make sure that it's connected with the uh, the latest and greatest in uh, flux duct technology. And there we go. That should hopefully chat uh, fairly quickly get us the beryllium that we need. Good stuff, good stuff. We'll go ahead and smelt that up in our nuclear furnace. And there we go. That should be all that we need, chat, in order to get ourselves the nitrogen generator. After, of course, we make yet more of these freaking plates. Gosh, we're, we're close. Chad, we're close. We're also, you know, quite far, but we're close. What am I missing? I need one more. <laughs> Boom. All right. Nitrogen collector complete. Fantastic. So, I think that's almost everything. We are going to need quite a lot of fluid ducts because we're moving a lot of fluids around here. And I think, Chad, that I might even splurge and go with the transparent fluid ducts. Not really much of a splurge, but they look a lot nicer. 
Um, and I'll also go ahead and make quite a few of these uh, reinforced servos as well. So I think what I am going to do, chat, is I think I'm going to build a new 9x9 compact machine because I think ideally we want to have the production of Dash and the arc furnace that uses uh, the Hopstitute in the same compact machine. And so to do that, we of course need to get another 9x9. Uh, to get a 9x9, thankfully, is not too difficult. We just need machine wall, which is uh, being made for us. Um, I think we could probably get away, chat, with increasing the amount of machine wall that we store before Isaac stops working. Like right now, he's going to start, hopefully, any second now doing his job. But if we increase this to like uh, 256, because if we're going to make four regular machines here, each requires 26. Uh, that means we need obviously well over a stack and I'd love to, you know, always have more than is required. Nice. All right. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and uh, throw those into our melter. Like so. And uh, again, you know, I should just upgrade like all of these cables here. There's, there's no reason uh, for these guys to be using the old leadstone flux ducts when we have hardened flux ducts right here in our inventory that allow us to speed these machines up to be significantly faster than they currently are. Uh, 32,000 RF per tick might be a little bit much, you know, even for even for our Wii system. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we could definitely do with making some uh, energy upgrades, I think. And speaking of which, we did start uh, the process of uh, smelting. Oh, sorry, crushing quartz over here. So we should be able to make a few energy upgrades so long as we make some uh, golden pressure plates. Nice. There we go. There we go. Now we're talking jet. 3,600 is much nicer. Okay. So those are chugging away. We can move these over to uh, here. Like so. Uh, this, of course, needs all of the speed upgrades that money can buy, right? Because this takes the uh, 500 seconds and does not require any uh, any power. That's done. Good stuff. And that should be, I think, chat, almost everything it takes to make the 9x9 machine. We, of course, need one more uh, of the old machine casing. But there we go. Large compact machine. Right. So, for now, it doesn't really matter where we put it. We can move this, of course, in the future if we want to find a new uh, location for it. But in here, we're going to build our arc furnace. Now, the arc furnace, I believe, is only a 5x5 five five, uh, machine. However, you do need at least a 7x7 seven seven space in order to use the arc furnace because you have to be able to access uh, the ports. You know, there's a port where it outputs at the front and inputs power at the back. So you need to be able to do that. Um, you know, so you need at least a 7x7 seven seven room to use an arc furnace. We've got the 9x9 nine nine room just to give us that little bit of, uh, of extra space. So now, chat, we need to work backwards from the dash. So for the dash, we need the alloy furnace. So the alloy furnace is the final item along the line. I'm going to put this for now like over here. We can always, uh, you know, reconfigure things if they need reconfiguring in the future. We might even end up, you know, having to use uh, some of the vertical space that we have available to us. But uh, from there, the hop graphite dust we're going to bring in from elsewhere, right? So we don't have to worry about that uh, just yet. We have to automate the squeezer and the cold coke to be able to get the hop graphite dust coming in regularly. The cubic boron nitride is made in the pressurizer. So we need a pressurizer. And um, this is, I think, the only stage of the whole system where an item duct is needed instead of a fluid duct. And you know what? I am going to go as far as to make some of the um, regular old item ducts, given that we have the hardened glass for it. So essentially, we're going to have something like this with the uh, the old server on here to, uh, to extract. And then let's just make sure that the uh, output there is set to down. So anything that's made in here should go straight down. I should also bookmark dash so I have it when I need it. Uh, so when... We put the hexagonal boron nitride into the pressurizer. It should make the uh, crystal and then stick it down in the alloy furnace with the uh, hop graphite dust. Then, if we're going to make the uh, the dust version of this um, hexagonal boron nitride, we need the crystallizer. So the crystallizer, let's go ahead and put this here. And uh, this is also actually one that needs uh, an item duct. Like that. And once again, we'll set the output here to down and only down just in case i don't think it really matters too much but just to be safe there uh, so into there requires some kind of fluid right so if we're going to make this we need i'm going to bookmark the boron nitride solution just so we don't have to go through all of the, the, the crafting tree every time uh, but this is boron nitride solution in the crystallizer the solution is made in the chemical reactor with boric acid and ammonia so we need our first chemical reactor 
right about here. And that is going to output ammonia. Now, the whole system here is going to require quite a few nullifiers because, for example, uh, the ammonia is actually a bad example, but uh, for example here, with the uh, the boric acid, when we make the boric acid, we get hydrogen gas as a byproduct. Now, I guess we could also look at pumping that background, actually, and maybe being a bit more efficient with our system. Um, but certain setups require, like, have two outputs, and we either have to nullify those um, or, you know, reuse them somewhere else, but we do have to uh, make sure that we set the outputs correctly. Uh, so, for example, here we're going to extract from the right, but if we're not careful, then we might get the wrong liquid coming through. So in this case, we're making ammonia. Thankfully, ammonia is the only output here, uh, but just to be safe, we'll make sure that this output doesn't go anywhere, and we'll make sure this output only goes to the right, like that. So it's going to make ammonia and send it on through. Ammonia is made with nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. So nitrogen gas comes from our lovely nitrogen collector, so we can just go ahead and throw that down, I guess for now, like right about there, and that's going to start filling that up with, uh, with nitrogen gas. Then hydrogen gas comes from our electrolyzer and water. Now, one thing we currently don't have that we definitely are going to need is uh, another water source. And in fact, I'm going to go as far as to just steal this one, chat, because it's there and we already have it. Now, we do only have the basic version of the water source and the nitrogen collector. And so we might need higher tier versions of these going forward, but we can, you know, we can cross that bridge when we come to it. We can look at upgrading those. Um, I think first and foremost, it's going to be the speed of the machines that slows us down, but you know, if we get to the point where we speed up enough, we could then look at, at speeding these up as well. But uh, either way, that's uh, that. And then the nitrogen is going to have to come from the electrolytic separator. Now, let me quickly check, uh, take a look at the, uh, the old boric acid as well. This is made with water and uh, diobrane. The diobrane is made with hydrogen gas and molten boron. The reason I look at this is because they both require hydrogen gas. So we want to set this up in such a way that, uh, that these can both use like the same system, right? So, and they also need water as well, hydrogen gas and nitrogen. So let's see here. If we have our electrolyzer, maybe just like right here for now, that's going to break down water from here into a bunch of different uh, outputs, right? And this is one of those situations where we're probably going to have to uh, look at voiding some of these like you know we've got hydrogen gas but then we also have oxygen which we could use for the blizz later on down the line uh, but for now we don't really need it and then we also have the uh deuterium don't know if i pronounced that right but right now we don't need this uh, we might just void it for the time being uh, via a nullifier but uh, essentially the long and short of it is that we want to have for now we'll set all of these to just not go anywhere apart from the one that being the top left slot which is where the hydrogen is uh, that one's going to go out on the right like that and so now if we put a server one and start to extract, once that start ma uh, starts making hydrogen, it should output it uh, to this chemical reactor. Now, the other part, and that's, I think, ammonia taken care of, right? Yes, that's ammonia done. Now, the boric acid requires water and dibrine. The dibrine requires hydrogen gas and molten boron. So the fact that that requires hydrogen gas as well makes me think we should probably have a chemical reactor right about here. And uh, this one is going to have... It's hydrogen gas coming in on this right slot like that so input on the bottom and then it's going to have what else did we need for the uh, dibrine there we needed molten boron it's going to have its boron coming in on the left like so and we'll have that coming straight in from the old melter so i'll put the melter um i think like right here and then we'll have that go down like that and we're kind of running into a bit of a position chat where i can't quite see what i'm doing up here but uh bear with me so we'll get rid of this we will extract from here, and we'll make sure that again, the output on here only goes down. So now the melt, the boron is gonna be melted. We'll probably have like a, an export bus or something, sending the boron uh, to the melter, turning it into molten boron, and then sending it down into this chemical reactor. That's gonna kind of combine with the hydrogen to make the uh, diobrine, diobrine. From there, we need to combine that diobrine with water before it goes into here, which is where things get a little janky. So I think what we'll do there is we'll have another chemical reactor have I built one too many chemical reactors? I didn't think I had, but we'll have another one up here because this is going to take the, I think, water from over here. And I'll go a little wide on this. Like that. Didn't connect, good. And then it's also going to take the diobrine 
And that's not going to the right slot. See, it's not going to the right slot there, which is where I think we might want it to issue. So let me temporarily disconnect that. You can shift right click to empty these out, which is quite nice. Uh, but I want this slot coming in from the bottom and this slot coming in from the left. Like that. And you just left click, by the way, for those to uh, toggle the outputs. So now we need to take the uh, diode brain, which is coming from here, right? That's right. Yeah, molten boron plus the hydrogen makes the... Uh, yeah, makes the, the diode brain. The diode brain is then used with water to make the boric acid. So the boric acid is going to be made up here, right? And again, we'll make sure that uh, this slot is coming in from the bottom. It is indeed good stuff. And we'll make sure also that uh, over here that that's not right, is it? No, no, no. Hold on. Uh, gosh, I'm uh, hold on. Electrolyzer, hydrogen. Hydrogen goes into here to make the... Yes, no, we're making the diabrine. Okay, and the diabrine, so we want to make sure that this slot here doesn't go anywhere and that this slot here goes up to here. So, this chemical reactor is making boric acid. That boric acid then needs to go down over to here. Oh, no. Oh, I think I've made a mistake here, chat, right? Because this chemical reactor is making... Yeah. Okay. This is this is this is fixable. I I I knew I needed the number of chemical reactors I have. What I've done, this reactor here is going to make the ammonia, and the boric acid is being made up there. So we need to move some of these machines because we need these to combine in like one final reactor. So we need one reactor, like right here, right, that takes in both the ammonia from here and then also the boric acid from up here like that and then outputs that into the crystallizer and then from the crystallizer we then go down into the pressurizer like so and then from the pressurizer we can then go into the alloy furnace all right i think chat that we have the basic kind of skeleton of this system ready to go now does it look somewhat nightmarish definitely 100 percent. but i think that this is correct I think if we provide all of these with power, which I now realize, given that I've built them up against the wall, is going to look horrendous. In hindsight, maybe I should have built them like one further out so I could power behind, but now we've just got cables running all over the front of this. But I think this is fine. We're going to input power, which is going to set all this going. And then I think that's going to put the crystals we need to make Dash into here. At that point, all we have to do now is automate the production of uh, pop graphite dust. So, what we will probably do is move this guy. I think for now we could put it, like, over here. Yeah, that should be fine. And then we'll have power coming in from the north. So, in here, let's have just something like this. Set that to north. And then we're going to hook all of these machines up to power. And as mentioned previously, it's going to be a little... Janky. And the word little there is doing some real heavy lifting. But I think we're on to something. So the electrolyzer is doing its thing. It's electrolyzing. Don't forget that we do also have to still output uh, some of the byproducts there. But for the most part, that should be doing its thing. You might also be thinking, Isaac, why did you decide to do this so high up? But I think in the long run, this might be, uh, might be worth it. So I think, is that, are we doing stuff? Is things, are things happening? That machine is super slow, the electrolyzer. Hmm, okay. Okay, okay, okay. If the electrolyzer is slow, let's see about moving in the old uh, speed upgrades. I do buy that it's slow because I know the one from Mechanism is as well. Now, uh, it does use 40 RF per tick. I don't know how many of these we can put in before we start to, uh, start to hit our power limit. This very much so just seems to not be working though. Like it might be one of those things where it requires uh, enough power. There we go. Okay, yeah. So much like the other um, nuclear craft machines, it needs to have enough redstone flux inside of it before it actually kickstarts the uh, the system. But that's I think we're about to see the system hopefully kick into gear. Now I don't know how much we actually get out of this to whether or not we're actually going to see it work effectively. But the hydrogen gas is up there. 
over here we have hydrogen gas and nitrogen. So I think it might need at least like one bucket's worth to actually uh, proceed with the craft there. Uh, what are we making in this one? Hydrogen gas, uh, hydrogen gas, hydrogen gas, and oh, of course, molten boron. So one thing we do have to do is uh, export boron uh, to the system. Right now we uh, we can do that manually. Just to uh, I say we can do that manually. We can't because we don't have what it takes to uh, to actually give it a go. But we can get some boron dust and then uh, and then test it to see if it works. But we are going to have to put an export bus there to uh, to fully automate the system. And we also do have to automate. Uh, the production of steel if we want to fully do that uh, but as was mentioned earlier in the stream i think the easiest way to automate steel uh, is via the induction furnace as opposed to via the blast furnace Let's see if i can find the recipe for it here yeah here it is so we can combine pulverized coal and iron to get steel uh, now we of course can't get coal just yeah i don't think but what we can do is we can turn our charcoal into coal uh, via the uh those other nuclear craft machines uh, so i think four boron dust might be enough to get us started let's have a look and see if this uh works so the melter will throw the four boron dust um, i assume each one produces about 250 millibuckets oh it's only 144 in that case i don't need to i don't i keep backing out i can do the pickaxing in here okay so are things are things working we got hydrogen coming in we got molten boron coming in slowly but surely that should eventually turn into the uh the diboride, right? Oh, we need like, oh, okay. So I think we only need the 144 millibuckets of molten boron, but we don't need 3,000 millibuckets of hydrogen gas before that will work. And we need so much, like more energy coming in a lot faster if we're gonna work with the, uh, the hydrogen gas, if we're gonna get that going. So I think, Chen, that the kind of system here is good to go. I think this will work when you know, the gases start moving. Really, our bottleneck right now is the electrolyzer. We, of course, have to ultimate boron and export that, but the electrolyzer is really what's slowing us down. And we can make it faster, but we need more power if we're going to make it faster. So I think it might not be a terrible idea, chat, to uh, to pivot into maybe making another 9x9 room and maybe making just like, or even a 7x7, but I think preferably a 9x9. And, um, and seeing if we can't just make a much bigger fission reactor to produce a lot more redstone flux than the one we currently have. So it looks like stuff here has been, while we've been doing other things, stuff here has been kind of chugging away a little bit. Um, have I done this correctly? So that's ammonia. Uh, oh, uh, almost. We need some more servos, right? So the boric acid is here. All right, so let's, hold on. Let me uh, finalize this. So right now, I don't want you going... Oh gosh, did I delete that? I did. Okay, that's fine. We had some hydrogen that we wasted, but that's okay. Right now, I don't want I don't want this output going anywhere. Um, I want this output going to the right, like that. And then I want that. So the boric acid. Let me just check real quick where the boric acid goes. The boric acid goes in on the left slot. So I want the left slot here to come in from the top, like that. So let's set you to extract so and then you we're gonna have the ammonia first of all this is is off fantastic you are going out on the right that's perfect and then you are coming in on the left side right like that is that right boric acid the boric acid goes in the left yeah then the right comes in on the left okay i think that's right chat. i think that's right so i think now if we put this here and we ignore redstone signal, that should bring in the ammonia, and then slowly but surely, it's going to combine the boric acid and the ammonia into boron nitride solution. Uh, for now, I didn't actually realize that you can um, void from within the machine. So what we could do for now is just void the water that comes here, like we can just go ahead and void excess. So it's going to fill it with water and then void any more water that it produces. And then from there, of course, uh, we want this to output on the right side and this to not output anywhere wait did i do this incorrectly chat i think i did i think i wanted this to come in from the left thankfully it went to the right place anyway yeah that's right so boron nitride solution we're then going to extract that into the old uh, the old crystallizer and then it's it's extremely slow and we could maybe speed this up a little bit with um with some of our speed upgrades which i think are hiding around in here somewhere.
Yeah, it's coming in. Coming in real slow. <laughs> oh no, not you got it. You can speed it up, but you can't speed it up too much. There we go. That's that's enough. That's gonna turn the boron nitride solution into hexagonal boron nitride. And then finally in the pressurizer, it's gonna be called the uh, the boron, the cubic boron nitride. There we go. And make sure that is set to extract, like so. And then we're good, I think. And then we go, chat. I think, finally, we have our first uh, cubic boron nitride. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right, so the system does work. It's just very slow. Very, very, very slow, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so, chat, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there. It's been uh, almost two hours here. So, on Wednesday, which is when we're going to play more of this pack, um, I will tomorrow we're going to play some more uh, Q-Tech, which we started on Saturday. Uh, Wednesday, when we come back, we will look at setting up the a, a bigger reactor, a bigger fission reactor, because our current fission reactor is clearly not producing enough redstone flux, even for uh, this system that we have here. Uh, so we'll look at setting up a new reactor. The new reactor will hopefully produce a lot more power to maybe hopefully speed all this up, especially the uh, electrolyzer over here. We'll also look at automating boron so that we can, you know, get the boron into the melter there and automate that. Uh, we also have to look at automating the rest of the, the line because we also have to automate uh, the uh, crushing of cold coke and then the squeezing of the crushed cold coke into hot graphite dust. And then we also have to look at making the uh, arc furnace so that we can actually uh, process the hop substitute that we get with the hop graphite dust into actual hop graphite ingots uh, to then, you know, blow up. And we can even look at automating the blowing up of things. Uh, I know that the robots can use redstone, so we could even potentially have a robot that like drops the, uh, I don't think it's necessary at this point to do it without robots, but we could have um, a robot that, you know, picks up all of the hop graphite ingots, walks over, drops it on the floor, presses a button, uh, well, places down TNT first, presses the button, backs away, watches it blow up, and then, you know, goes and we can have like a vacuum to collect it or something uh, after the fact. I think that could be, uh, could be quite cool. Um, but for now, guys, as always, thank you for watching.